Chess friends, hope you are doing well, a day ago, I showed you a game where I played against Leela Zero, and I played very spectacularly against her, but today, she has the white pieces against me, and this game is very tactical and strategic, as you know, Leela Zero is a top chess engine and a female chess AI, so let's get started without wasting any time, she started the game with knight f3, a very tactical move, and I went with d5, we have b3 to put the bishop on b2 to control the center squares. That's her strategy, which is why I played c5, putting pressure on d4 so Leela 0 couldn't push her pawn forward, my pieces are guarding the border so white stays within hard limits. As the bishop controls the diagonal, playing any natural looking move will dramatically affect the position, after playing knight f6 and some usual moves like e3 and d4, knight d2 will follow, this position is often reached in chess matches, and it is almost like the queen's gambit decline variation, where you can push your queen's side pawns and play the usual moves. There is no specific strategy. Returning to the position, I didn't consider knight f6 instead, I played pawn to f6, putting pressure on the e5 square to block the bishop's diagonal, also, I am threatening to increase my peace activity in my camp. Therefore, playing e3 and knight h4 could lead to an advantageous position for her to invade my king by playing queen h5 because the diagonal is wide open. This tactic is almost like one used by 1000 rated players, it is for players rated above 1000, so, after playing knight c3, because I am not a 1000 rated player, I could have given for e5, but I decided to go with knight c6, because I am the gangster of chess, and when she replied with d4 to prevent me from playing e5, we exchanged pawns on d4, and I immediately played e5, that is a very strategic move, and you have to think about my move, if you play any normal move while eating your chocolate, then I can surprise you by playing pawn to f5, kicking out the knight again, if your knight goes to g3 instead of d2, I can target the knight and play bishop f5 dramatically, causing significant damage to the knight. The knight has no good squares to go to and must retreat. Another possible move is knight f2 d2, creating some space to launch a counter-attack, after knight f6 and exchanges on f6, black will have a majority of pawns in the center with three connected past pawns, while white has very little development, it's like a river speeding up and flooding your city, and you can't create a barrier, if you consider g3, preparing for an attack on the c2 pawn, then my knight can invade with knight b4 and after the rook moves, the queen will invade c6, targeting your rook, even playing f3 won't solve your problem, as my knight can jump to d5, threatening knight e3, the queen will be trapped and unable to escape. If you shine a light on the situation, then bishop b4 check will arrive, like a ghost appearing in your room at night, and as the king moves up, a vampire will come to your bed through a window, knight e3 will trap the queen, and the game will be in my favor. Returning to the position, we discover that playing knight f3 is a very bad choice, which is why she captured the knight on c6 and then immediately played e4, playing e3 is a very bad choice because black has a majority of pawns in the center, and your pawn on e3 is very passive, you have to play very aggressively and dominate the chessboard by playing strategically, check, capture, threat, and attack, that's the key secret of chess, in this position, Playing d4 might be tempting for many chess players. But you know what? Many chess players are average, like a 60 IQ person who is nothing but a toy for a cat, the white knight will go to a4, and consequently, bishop c4 will come to dominate the light squares, making it difficult for you to castle, despite having a muscular body and six-back abs, the c6 pawn will be very weak, it's like having a muscular body but little legs and a dull intellect like a duck. So, returning to the position, we discovered that playing d4 is a very bad choice, which is why I decided to go with b6, after exchanges occurred and on d5, she played queen e2 immediately, putting pressure along the file, here, many chess players with different ELO ratings will choose different moves, a very popular move among most of you might be bishop f6, which seems reasonable however, after white castles, the rook will get the open file, and the d5 pawn will be under attack. Playing knight to e7 with the idea of castling is a very bad choice, 
because the knight can easily jump into the farm and take the bananas from the tree, even the rook can come to d5, because if you capture it, b5 will come, a very strong move to regain the material, and your king will be in a very bad position. So, going back to the position, we saw that knight to e7 is a very bad choice, it's like a frog trying to protect its territory from a snake attack, it doesn't make any sense, if you dare to consider d4 to progress your structure, I can invade by playing knight to b5, even if you move your bishop back, I can play a strategic move that you would never imagine in your dreams, most of you dream a lot and procrastinate your work and creativity by indulging in dull pleasures. This position is analogous to that, if you do all the small pleasurable activities all day long, like capturing the rook on d4, then I can invade and attack, like time coming across your life and telling you that you have lost many opportunities, the queen arrives at e6, and you cannot block it with your own queen because queen to c6 can fork your two pieces. Therefore, after playing knight e7, bishop c4 will come, and even playing rook to f8 will not solve your issue, because knight takes c7 sacrifices the knight like a brave army officer sacrifices himself at the border. This opens up the border and allows bishop b5 check, forcing the king to move. Then rook to d1 will arrive to attack the pawn, giving me a significant advantage, your king being in the middle of the board is disastrous for you. So, going back to the position, we discovered that playing any sort of bishop move or knight move is a very bad choice, which is why some may consider playing d4 to progress the structure, but progressing in structure cannot stabilize your other dimensions in chess. After castling and a couple of moves later, knight to b5 will follow, and bishop to c5 will come, then white can invade the center by playing f4, and your pawn on d4 will be under attack by many pieces, the e-file might open, which will be very favorable for white, like finding golden treasure hidden under a hill. White will become wealthy and dominant. So, let me share a beautiful and amazing quote with you. Tomorrow is not promised and the past cannot be changed therefore live each day to the fullest and know that every new day is a blessing. So, going back to the position, we discovered that playing any sort of non-natural move is just wasted, which is why I decided to go with queen b6 to protect these areas, white castled, and the d5 pawn was again under attack, playing knight to e7 is a very bad choice because white can respond with f4 creating a hard attacking problem on the e5 square, even playing e4 cannot solve your issue, because f5 can arrive, deflecting the bishop. As the bishop moves, knight captures on d5 will follow. After a couple of moves, rook takes d5 will attack the bishop, and as the bishop retreats, queen g4 will come, targeting the d7 square, even bishop to b5 is coming to ruin your king's position, with your king still in the middle of the board, giving me a significant advantage. It's like your past bad decisions bringing a very bad present, you have to pay for your past mistakes, just like paying off credit card debt. So, going back to the position, we discover that these two pawns, especially the d5 pawn, are under attack, which is why I decided to play long castle, long castling is the only option playing any normal kind of move and going for the short side castle is like hoping to build a big house or property, which will never be accomplished, let me analyze this position more, because you are not a genius like Albert Einstein or Magnus Carlsen, some may consider moving the bishop out to d6. But what about your pawn on d5? I can easily capture it, and after some exchanges, knight to e7 might be considered by many players, then, I can invade by playing queen b5, and consequently, bishop to b5 will come. Regardless of your king's move, I can capture your bishop, and with the extra material, I will win the game, that's my strategy in chess mathematics, you have to count the pieces and their activities and measure it in the evaluation. So, going back to the position, we discovered that playing any sort of knight or bishop move is a very bad choice, this is the reason why we opt for long side castling, dealing with the queen side to keep the king safe because he has no other choice, Leela immediately strikes in the center with f4. Leela 0, are you kidding me? Or are you taking revenge for your earlier losses? Let me play e4 and prevent your knight from becoming too active, 
which would allow your bishop to go to d4 and attack this dark square. Leela 0 simply played king b1, and I played h5, I have no bodyguards on the king side, which is why I have to invade the queen side, but she said, you want to attack the queen side. Let me give you a gift on f5, she sacrificed her pawn, but it's not what you expect from a pawn sacrifice, she has a strategy, she deflects my bishop and captures the pawn on d5, it's like hiring a soldier to protect your border, but the soldier has to go to the toilet, and meanwhile, the opponent invades your border, the queen has to move, and when the rook comes to d4, it has a strong strategy to go to c4, as I told you, you have to play chess strategically, check capture, threat and attack. Bishop c5 might look reasonable, but white can threaten me by playing knight b4, the bishop cannot capture it because of rook c4, also, the bishop cannot capture the rook because your queen is hanging there, so, after queen moves to b6, putting pressure on the rook, white can simply play rook to c4, and your king needs to hide, I mean, your position is just devastated, if you consider playing king b8, I can capture your bishop, because you cannot capture it back due to knight a6 fork on the king and queen. It's like the rook has its own bodyguard, and you cannot approach it because it's a trap, be aware of such traps. Playing king to b7 is also a bad choice because white can respond with knight to a6, attacking the bishop and putting pressure on your king side, this position is very advantageous for me, even if you capture the knight, I can play the stunning move rook to b4, sacrificing the rook to win your queen. This position is advantageous for me, as I told you, returning to all the variations, we discover that capturing the pawn is a trap move because Leela Zero does not give me anything for free, even to win her heart, I need to be very influential and gangster in chess. So, I just move back my bishop, and she comes with the knight, suddenly, she played c4, her madness on her face is so cute and so strategic, I go with bishop before, but she played a3, here, I played a stunning move that might shock everyone, not everyone, but if you are an intermediate player in chess, it might shock you because, you know what. Chess is very difficult when you play without any hints or online, after capturing the bishop, queen takes b3 will come, attacking the knight, blocking the attack by playing queen b2 is not viable because of queen takes d1. You will lose control of the rook, and I will win the rook and eventually the knight on the next move. That is my strategy. Going back to the position, Leela Zero captured the pawn on d5, she is not concerned with capturing the bishop as she knows my strategies and tactics very well, she is a super aggressive and beautiful chess player, after a couple of moves, we have bishop c4 followed by rook to e1 and rook to d8, you can see that all my pieces are protecting the entire army camp, the entire kingdom, and the entire territory because my position needs safeguarding. After a few more moves, we have king to b2 and eventually bishop goes to a6, that's a very mad, superlative move, directly attacking my queen, we have the queen back to b8, and you can see that Leela Zero's position is creating much pressure on mine, the f5 pawn cannot be captured by the knight because queen takes h5 can create an invasion on the king side. This is why we have rook to b7, at first glance, it looks like a very dumb move, like your dumb face, but it's not the actual truth, if white dares to capture the rook, queen takes b7 will come, and after a few moves, you can see that white cannot make any progress on the king side with her pieces because the position almost becomes favorable for black, and I will get sufficient compensation. So, going back to the position, the rook cannot be captured, which is why Leela goes with bishop a5, making a titanic attack on my rook, as the rook moves, we have rook to e6, attacking the bishop. In this position, some may consider playing rook to d7 to safeguard the rook from being attacked by the bishop, like someone opens an umbrella to save themselves from the rain and storm, but they don't know that an umbrella attracts electricity like a magnet, where the thunderbolt can arrive through the umbrella, my knight can invade by playing knight c5, and after you capture my knight, a discovered check on d6 will arrive. You can see that this position is just losing for you because after blocking the check, Capture and recapture occur on the e7 square, my rook can attack by playing rook to d7, and your rook is under attack by many pieces. It's like in a fire on a hill, your shoes get attached to the magma, 
and you are left with two choices, take the shoes or leave them behind and walk without shoes, that's akin to this variation. So, let me tell you an inspirational quote with you. A butterfly can't see its own wings, and you can't see your own beauty, but the rest of the world can, and does. So, going back to the position, when the bishop is attacking the rooks and the other bishop is making significant pressure. The knight is creating much pressure like Hitler dominating Europe in World War II in the first phase of war, the king on a8 is much hypothesized and weak, so as the king moves to a2 to save himself from the bishop attack, we have knight capture on f5, the queen goes to d3, aligning with the rook and queen, as I told you, the bishops are like crisscross applesauce, creating much pressure on these rooks and a vulnerable position around your pieces, we have rook to h8 and rook to e6, attacking the bishop. Suddenly, I played knight e7 to invade and attack with the bishop. After a couple of moves, we have exchanges on b7, and rook to e8, check. In this position, some of you might consider playing rook takes e8, which looks very reasonable, but after I capture your rook, you can see that regardless of your move or blocking system on the king side, I can play queen to c6 check, forcing you to play queen b7, then, a stunning move will come, and I can slap your bald head by playing knight c5, just joking, don't take my words seriously because I need to make my commentary witty and intellectual, after capturing. You can see that I have a rook for your minor piece, and I am completely winning the game, even if you dare to capture my knight on c5, it will be checkmate by playing rook to d8, throwing you down in the mud and making your face look very embarrassed. So, going back to the position, we discover that rook takes rook is not viable, which is why the bishop blocks on b8, I brilliantly capture the rook and sacrifice my queen on e3, after you capture my queen, my knight comes to c5 to attack your queen, which is almost paralyzed and needs some help to get out of the danger zone. Queen to b5 happened in the game, and you can see that my queen does not give any check to Leela Zero's king, that's the power and beauty of Leela Zero, we have bishop c7 making pressure on the bishop and knight to c4, a very strategic move to open up the b-file to invade by playing queen to b1, but this is not possible because Leela Zero is very intellectual. We have captures on the b8 square, and I get my queen back. After a couple of moves, we have knight takes d7 and knight takes f6. You can see that at the end of the day, I have a bishop, and she is left with a rook, this is completely winning for her because she has a passed pawn on the b-file, which she promoted and checkmated me on h7, this was a very beautiful and amazing game, I hope you enjoyed it very much, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best. Bye bye, take care, see you soon.